June 17, St. Hervé, also known as Harvey. He is the patron saint of the blind, of bards and musicians. He is invoked against eye problems, eye disease, and invoked to cure sick horses. In northwest France, the two most popular names for boys are Ives, after St. Ives, and Hervé, or Harvey, after a 6th century Breton monk, especially after St. Harvey's relics were distributed throughout Brittany in the year 1002, this monk saint became intensely popular. Indeed, up until the year 1610, when the local court ordered that all official oaths be taken on the Bible only, those in northern France took solemn oaths on the relics of St. Harvey. His feast was also for some time listed as one of the holidays of obligation in the Diocese of Lyon. Abbot Harvey is often mentioned in the tales and songs of Brittany. Around the year 520, a Celtic bard driven out of Britain by the Anglo-Saxon invaders came to the court of Childebert I, the Frankish king of Paris. This bard was Harvey's father. In a few years after being at court, he moved to Brittany to be in the company of his exiled countrymen. There he married a girl who was Harvey's mother, but unfortunately he was born functionally blind. His father died soon after birth, and his mother raised her child until he was seven. Then she entrusted him to a holy man. Later, Harvey joined his uncle, a monk who had launched a little school in his monastery at Pluvain. Despite his poor sight, young Harvey was able to help the uncle with the children and the farm tasks of the monastery. Eventually, he became a monk of the community. One day, we are told, while he was plowing in the fields, a wolf attacked the donkey that was drawing his plow. It is also sometimes noted as a cow drawing the plow. A small child who was assisting the monk cried out in panic, but Harvey, already a devout young man, simply prayed for divine help. The response, says the legend, was miraculous. The wolf, repenting, shouldered the dead donkey's harness and meekly pulled the plow himself until the task was finished. Harvey's mother had meanwhile been living far away in the depths of a forest with only a niece to keep her company and do her service in her declining years. Learning of her grave illness, the future saint traveled back to see her. She gave him her last blessing and he closed her eyes in death. Not long after he returned to his community... His uncle put him in charge of the monastery. Three years later, he decided to move the whole establishment elsewhere. Accompanied by all his monks and students, he set out westwardly. At Lyon, the bishops cordially greeted the travelers. There, the bishop offered to ordain Harvey a priest, but out of humility, he would only accept the minor order of exorcist. Eventually, the community reached its final resting place, where he established a new monastery that was to become famous throughout Brittany. Abbot Harvey spent the rest of his life at his new establishment, although from time to time he was called forth to preach to the people of the area and to exercise his office of exorcist. It was in the later capacities that he performed many of the miracles attributed to him. Once, it is said, noisy frogs that interfered with his sermon stopped their croaking at his command. The older he grew, the more revered he became for his holiness. Father Harvey lived a long life. When he was breathing his last, says the legend, the monks at his bedside heard an angel choir singing him a song of welcome. St. Harvey is often identified in pictures or statues along with a wolf in a yoke. Sometimes he is also shown as a preacher quieting frogs. His followers still invoke his aid against diseases of the eye and cite his wolf as a warning to disobedient children. <laughs> 